All right, class, welcome to the uh, video on plane geometry. Uh, this is a review for your test that's coming up on Wednesday. I'll try to keep it as short as possible. Make sure you take notes and uh, study from them. The key here for this test is going to be memorization, memorization of the different types of angles and geometric properties. And, and then knowing how to get the missing angles and then justify your answer. Good luck. So the first question we're going to work with, you can see on the screen here. And looking at this, I observe first that I have a triangle, that I have two interior angles, and that I have one exterior angle that I'm trying to discover, which is x. So I need to show my work. Uh, and to start off by showing my work, I'm going to do x equals, because that's what I'm trying to find. Uh, as noted, I have two interior angles of a triangle, and I know uh, because of EAT, exterior angle theorem, that the two interior angles of a triangle equal the opposite exterior angle. So to answer this, I'm going to do 70 plus 50, and I know 70 plus 50 equals 120, so X equals 120 degrees. So now I have to justify my answer. To justify my answer, I would simply write the two interior angles of a triangle are equal to the opposite exterior angle. Therefore, therefore, x equals 70 plus 50. And that's all I need to write for that. Next question. So I observe here I have two triangles. The triangle on the left is an isosceles triangle, and I know that because of these little lines here that tell me that those sides are equal. And I know that... Uh, with isosceles triangle that the two base angles are going to be equal to each other. So based on that, I can know that this angle here is going to be 48 degrees. And once I know that that angle there is 48 degrees, I can also observe that I have here a supplementary angle. And I know that supplementary angles equal 180 degrees. So, to find that angle, I would simply do 180 minus 48 equals 132 degrees. So now, I have this angle as well. I have that angle as well. And so now I have a triangle. I can observe my triangle. I have one angle that's 30, one angle that's 132, and I need to find x. I know that a triangle, uh, the sum of the degree of the angles, uh, degrees of the angles on the interior of the triangle are equal to 180. So to find the answer for x, I would simply write x equals 180 minus 132 minus 30. And that's going to give me, once I punch that into my calculator, 18 degrees. So x equals 18 degrees. So now I have to justify my answer, and because this takes uh, basically three steps to get to my answer, instead of writing it out here on the screen to save us a bit of time, I'm just going to say what I would write and then post it as an image. The base angles, uh, in my justification, I would say the base angles of an isosceles are equal, so the unknown base angle of the isosceles equals 48 degrees. I know that supplementary angles equal 180 degrees, so the supplementary angle of 48 degrees is 132 degrees, and the sum of the interior angles of a triangle are equal to 180 degrees, therefore x equals 180 minus 132 minus 30. And I'm going to post that here for you now. So there you can see how it, I would write out the justification for my answer here. Uh, as noted, if it takes more than one step, then you need to justify uh, each step, each uh, answer that you got for the any unknown angles that you needed to solve in order to solve x. 
All right, so next question. This one's a lot easier to justify. If I'm looking at this, I can observe there's two parallel lines and a transversal. I can see that one of the angles is 65. I then also notice that this x is an alternate angle to 65, so simply all I have to write out is x equals 65 degrees. And then as an explanation, I would just say uh, the alternate angle of x equals 65 degrees, and that's it. I would be done justifying my response. Now, very important to uh, note here that if you misidentify which geometric property you used, you will lose marks on the test. So it's important to, as I mentioned at the beginning, to memorize the different uh, geometric properties that you have learned about. Okay. Next question. In this question here, again, I observe that I have two parallel lines, that I have a transversal. I can see one of the angles is 114 degrees. So I also notice that x is a co-interior of 114 degrees. So to solve this, I would simply do x equals 180 minus 114. And the answer then I would get is 66 degrees. And then to justify this, simply I would say... Uh, x is co-interior co-interior with 114 degrees therefore 180 minus 114 equals x and I would be done that's it that's simple next question for this question I would see that I have two parallel lines and a transversal. I have one angle which is 39 degrees. I can see that 39 degrees is uh, corresponding with y. So I would simply write y equals 39 degrees. And then when I, when I want to justify that, I'm going to talk about the fact that it's a corresponding angle with 39 degrees. Now i got to figure out x. I can see that y and x are supplementary angles. So to find x, I would simply do x equals 180 minus 39, and I would get 141. So x equals 141 degrees. Then to um, justify my answer, I would simply say y... Oh, sorry, the corresponding angle of y is 39 degrees. And then to find uh, x, I would say uh, x and y are supplementary. angles, therefore, therefore 180 minus 39 equals x, and I would be done this one. All right, to answer a question like this here, I'm going to start as always with observing. Here I can observe I have two parallel lines. I have two transversals in this case, and the transversals meet down here at the bottom and form a triangle. So I can first use the properties uh, that I know about triangles in order to solve what this missing angle is here. And then once I have that angle, I can use it to figure out P. So to do that, I would do 180 minus 42 minus 65. And that's going to give me 73 degrees. So I know this is 73 degrees. Then I can observe that P and 73 degrees are opposite angles so that I could get P equals 73. Now to find out what R is, I could do this a couple ways, but one way I could do it is I could find this angle here and I can find that angle and it'll tell me what R is because those two angles are what we call corresponding angles. So if I use supplementary angle theory, the theorem here, then I would get 180 minus 73, which equals 107 degrees, which means R equals 107 degrees. 
So up here in my little chart, I would write in for R, 107 degrees. For P, I'm going to write in 73 degrees. Now what I need to do is write in my justifications, that is explain um, uh, which geometric properties I used to find my answer. And since this will uh, take a bit of time to write out, I'm going to type it out and paste it in here. So here are my justifications. Uh, for P, I wrote, the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees, referring to this triangle over here, this triangle here, and uh, therefore the unknown angle in the triangle, referring to this angle here, is 73 degrees. Opposite angles, these are the two opposite angles there, are equal, and the opposite angle of P is 73 degrees, therefore P equals 73 degrees. And then for R, what I wrote, supplementary angles are uh, equal, sorry, 180 degrees. So the supplementary angle of P equals 107. So I'm referring to this section here, P and this unknown angle. <clears throat> that one equals 107. And we know corresponding angles, this angle and this angle, are equal. Therefore, R equals 107 degrees. And that's how you would answer this kind of question. So on the test, you will get a couple of questions that look like this. An icosagon has 20 sides. What is the sum of the interior angles of an icosagon? Obviously, it'll be a different polygon listed here and here when you get the question on the test, but you'll do solve the question in the same way. So we can write the equation that you should have memorized. Uh, the degrees equals n minus 2 times 180. And you could also write this as... Uh, uh, D equals 180 times N minus 2. Either way is correct. And once you do this, uh, you would then substitute in for N, 20. N stands for number of sides. D stands for degrees. And we're trying to find out the sum of the interior angles. So we're trying to find out how many degrees uh, do the angles add up to in an icosagon. So if I substitute in uh, for n 20, I end up with 20 minus 2 times 180, and I end up with 18 times 180. I forgot to put my bracket there before. And if I do 18 minus 180, then I get 3,000... Then I get 3,240. So there are 3,240 degrees in an icosagon. The other kind of question you'll get is the sum of the interior angles of a polygon is 2,700 degrees. How many sides does the polygon have? Again, you would write out your formula. D equals, and I'm going to do it like this this time, 180 times n minus 2. The exact same thing. And in order to answer this, I have to keep in mind that I've been given the degrees. Remember, D stands for degrees. So I'm going to write 2700 equals 180 times N minus 2. Then to solve this, I'm going to use the distributive property. And so on my next line, I'm going to write again 2700 equals 180N minus 360, because I multiplied 100 times negative 2. Now to solve this, this is just a simple two-step equation. I now need to add 360 to both sides of the equation. So I would do 2700 plus 360 equals 180n, because when I add 360 uh, to negative 360, they become uh, 0. Okay, so I end up with 2700 plus 360 equals 180 n, and then when I add those two, I end up with 3060 equals 180 n. Now to solve this, I just have to divide both sides by 180, and if I divide 3060 divided by 180, I end up with the answer of 17 equals n, so this polygon has 17 sides. 
Well, that concludes our video. I tried to make it as quick and painless as possible. Uh, review what you need to. Uh, good luck on the test.